Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Saturday, watching the snow come down here across the west as this northwest flow rings out all of this moisture over the mountain ranges. So we're in the Wasatch first. This is up at Solitude. You can see we're filling up the box there. Snow continues to fall. That'll be the case for the rest of the morning. Then the snow is going to taper off this afternoon, and that's probably the end of it. There may be some lingering light snow over the coming you know, 24 hours, but we're really in the peak of it um, through this morning. Then again, it's going to uh, start to taper. But look at it, about 13 inches of new snow in the last 24 hours. This is uh, Alta. You can see what they're saying. There's their 24 hours. So some of that probably fell yesterday afternoon and last night. Storm total of 14. There's your 10 inches over the last 12 hours. Um, and I showed you the... Uh, uh, the cam there from the snow stake. That's what it looks like right now. Still snowing up there um, and looking pretty good. Here's Jackson Hole. Snow is coming down. They haven't updated their numbers yet for the morning, but clearly you can see it's still snowing. I'll show you the radar up there. Um, it, actually, the Tetons, a lot of Montana and Idaho are um, part of my longer term bullseyes. So th this is just the very beginning of what we're going to see up there in the Tetons. I have absolutely no worries at all for that area. Um, so this is cool. This really paints the picture of the morning. You've got uh, heavy snow coming down. I expect heavy snow accumulations across. This is a basin, by the way, uh, across all of that I-70 corridor, especially up there in the Continental Divide, Arapaho Basin, Loveland, um, Brack down in the Summit County, Copper Vale, Steamboat. All of those places are going to continue to get hit today as this northwest flow delivers. We're looking at air temps in the teens up there and strong wind gusts, 40, 50 miles per hour most of today in that zone. All right, here's your radar across the west, the big view again. So everything coming down this northwest flow, bumping into the mountain ranges. Um, there's your uh, snow in the Salt Lake, uh, the Wasatch District right there. There it is, just nailing that north to south orientation. The Tetons, you've got it up here, Glacier. Um, a lot of those, uh, those ranges through uh, Discovery up to uh, Whitefish coming out of central and northern Idaho. I mean, that's just what we're going to see um, continue with that. Now, here's Colorado, the radar out of Colorado. And again, that signature right there, right over the top of the I-70 corridor with that, uh, that northwest flow just coming in and nailing those areas. So that's going to continue all day today. All right, let's look at the, uh, the water vapor. Give you the view on top of all of this from space. So um, whites, blues, that's going to be your moisture in the mid-levels. And you can just see the flow coming right down through here and hitting all of those, uh, those mountain ranges. So we've got some storm snow. We've got orographic snow, both of those things combining. And the temperatures, um, in many cases, are definitely cold enough to snow. I'd like them to be maybe a couple degrees colder, but... You know, we're, at least we're squeezing out snow in places that are in desperate need of it. So that's your uh, that's your water vapor. Um, let's go to bullet points. Here's what I'm seeing in this update. Um, the northwest flow is going to stay locked in for the next 24 hours with this surge. Then the flow is going to shift. The moisture is going to start to get cut off across a lot of Utah. And even for that, that matter, Colorado, as the flow starts to shift back to the north. But it's going to stay solid today in Colorado. Then what we're going to see probably starting tomorrow um, is that that flow is going to move back to the north and hit Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, the Pacific Northwest, and, in, and interior BC for that matter. That's where it's going to start to refocus. Uh, but today it will still continue to, to hit Colorado and at least this morning up in the Wasatch. In fact, here are your best odds of accumulating snow, just basically echoing what I just said. So moderate to heavy in Colorado today, and then it goes light. In Utah, it's mainly just this morning, light to moderate additional accumulations. And boy, look at Idaho, moderate to heavy, and then heavy for three or four days. Montana, same features. Wyoming, same features, moderate to heavy, moderate to heavy, heavy. And when you see the extended forecast in the, the numbers, it's, uh, it's really impressive. I mean, some of these places are going to crank out um, some big time uh, additional snowfall. All right, let's look at the, uh, the forecast uh, radar. So we'll start this up at lunchtime today. 
on the clock. Saturday, December 6th, you've got snow continuing in Colorado, beginning to wind down right here in parts of uh, the Wasatch, but still heavy snow up here in Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, Pacific Northwest, at higher elevations of the Pacific Northwest, only higher elevations. All right, here's a dinner hour. Still some lingering snow in Colorado. Um, here is 5 a.m. on Sunday, um, December 7th. So this definitely marks a transition point because look at Utah and Colorado drying out at that point. The whole flow is shifting back up here, basically north of this line. All right, let's go to the lunch hour. There we are at lunch. There's still a little bit of a teeny tiny snow that appears to be brushing extreme northern Utah, but most of it, this is the dinner hour on Sunday. Most of it's up here in Idaho, Wyoming, uh, Montana, Wyoming, Montana, and the Pacific Northwest. And that's where it's actually going to stay. So here we are, 5 a.m. on Monday, December 8th. There's your lunch hour on Monday, December 8th, and look at the flow right here. So the Tetons up here in Montana, Idaho, the Pacific Northwest, and interior BC. And that's the hot zone going forward. Time height forecast. This is Loveland Ski Area in Colorado. Um, so this is the current time. You move three days into the future by going in this direction, and you're going through a slice, a vertical slice of the atmosphere. The green is going to be the higher humidity ind indicative of uh, moisture um, generation. And so look at this. This is the biggest area right here. And so we've, we're in it right now, all the way through tonight. So right now, through tonight, key time for big-time snow generation, heavy accumulations. About a foot up there at Loveland today, um, this morning, today, tonight. And there's a little bit of a lull. Moisture trickles out. And then there's there's maybe a little additional snow through the afternoon of um, maybe the 8th um, into the, uh, the early hours there of the 8th, late 7 into early 8. So... That's what the Northwest flow tends to do. You'll get the bulk of it, which is what we're going to see today, tonight. And then there's it kind of wanes a little bit, but then there's just little trickles of that Northwest flow that may bump up over the Continental Divide in Colorado um, even tomorrow. It'd be light additional snow accumulation, but it's there. All right, here's the forecast for atmospheric pressure anomalies. This is on um, Sunday the 7th, and you can kind of see that with these ripples right here in the flow. Um, so a little bit of that northwest flow might continue with tiny additional accumulations on the 7th over parts of uh, the Continental Divide in Colorado. But definitely very active up here along the transition zone. That's on Sunday. This is 12.9. Now by this point, you've got much higher pressures moving into Utah, Colorado. But look at the, the ripples up here. Definitely seeing... A battle zone and this is where the biggest accumulations are going to be because the, again the flow is going to shift back to the north into the Tetons into Montana central to northern Idaho the Pacific Northwest interior BC uh, and definitely very uh, looking to lower the normal pressures up there in the Northeast and the Great Lakes um, much colder with a lot of clippers um, okay so here we go this is the, tw the 13th uh, I've been alluding to this the last couple of days Big time high pressure, higher than normal pressures building in, and significant drop in pressures here uh, with lots of clippers and much colder air spinning across the Great Lakes and uh, the Northeast. So that would mark a, uh, a definite end to the cold and the snow across the West, if that actually verifies. All right, total precip over the next five days. It is rich and it is just consistent. So initially, the northwest flow delivers it into Utah, Colorado. Then the flow shifts, bends to the north, and it favors the Tetons, Montana, Idaho, the Pacific Northwest, and BC. You can see that. I mean, the key break point, again, is about an inch. That's a foot of snow where you see the yellows, at least a foot of snow. I mean, look at some of these pinks up here. Guys, that's like 10 inches of liquid. Um, okay, let's shift that vantage point down to the southwest pretty dry. I have nothing, and this shows nothing, 
for California and the desert southwest. It's all up here into Utah, Colorado, at least for the next 24 hours. Uh, it's simple 10 to 1 snow based on that. Um, so again, initially we've got snow over the next 24 hours in Utah, Colorado, then the flow is going to shift. And, oh my goodness. So on this 10 to 1, deep purples at least 6 inches, bright pinks a foot or more. Where you see the whites, that's 2 feet or more. So you've got it. Watch at the animation up here. Pacific Northwest, Central to Northern Idaho, potentially into parts of Montana. The Tetons. Whew. Boy, that is big. Southwest Vantage Point. 20, next 24 hours, it's all up here. Utah, Colorado. Uh, here's my official snow forecast by the close of business on 1210. So roughly the next five days. I've only got four to eight inches of additional snow, and that's happening right now now as I make this video in the Wasatch because then it goes dry this afternoon and beyond drier. Um, we'll zoom into Colorado but I've got two feet back on the board I think with this type of flow I, I don't think that's going to be an issue I think we'll get to two feet probably at Brundage as well I debated on going 24 up here in northwest Montana and Schweitzer Discovery Snowball Whitefish I think it's possible it's a really rich flow. 8 to 14 up here, Red Lodge, Bridger, and Big Sky. I've got 10 to potentially 16 up here, including Sunshine and Norquay for a change. So you're in it. And 1 to 2, 2.5 two feet up here in the Pacific Northwest. The issue up here in the Pacific Northwest is the rain snow line. You really have to be high up to get these numbers. And nothing for California in the Southwest. You're just totally out of the flow. Zooming into Colorado, you can see the effect of the northwest flow delivering the snow. Um, it's mainly into Vail, the Gore Range, Copper, Summit County, uh, Loveland, A Basin, Winter Park, Steamboat, Cameron Pass. So kind of like right into this corridor. You're kind of on the outside, on the periphery now, at Snowmass, Aspen, Crested Butte. You're kind of on the outside looking in. You'll still get four, five, six, seven, eight inches, but not the foot that uh, these other locations are going to get in Vail East. Barely anything down here across the southwest. Not surprising. All right, here's what's left. And again, that's happening right now in the Wasatch, four to eight inches, because then the flow goes much drier. Um, looking at the northeast, Again, it, we see a big drop in pressures up here and quite a bit of lake effect potentially coming off of Ontario, Erie, and Michigan. But pretty good storm snow up here. Look at some of the deep purples. That's at least six inches. The bright pink's about a foot. How does that shake out? Here's my official forecast for the Northeast by close of business on 1210. Um, looking at potentially a 10 to a foot up here through Snow Ridge, Whiteface, Stowe, and Jay Peak and Mount Washington. So that's really my key ribbon of heavy snow accumulation. Sixes through southern Vermont. Six up here at Tremblant. Again, those are totals by the end of business on 1210. Um, okay, guys, let's go back and end on the big map here. Enjoy today. Enjoy tomorrow. We're going to have some really nice powder out there in a lot of those preferred northwest flow regions coming straight down through here through the Tetons, certainly today in the Wasatch, and today, tonight, through a lot of those central and northern mountain corridors of Colorado that tend to get hit really well, so enjoy it. And then again, the flow is going to shift back up to the, uh, the northern Rockies. Take care. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in here.